Holmes Select Board meeting of Wednesday, February 19th to get uh, to order. Uh, to my left is Flo Smith. I'm Brad Town. With us on the phone is Jeremy Hansen and Justin Lawrence. And additions or changes to the agenda data. Yes, I'd like to add, uh, I'm asking the Liquor Board to convene um, because we have several licenses that have come in that need to be approved. Okay. And I'd also like to discuss a situation on Scott Hill Road. Uh... All set on that, Dana? Yes, thanks. Okay. Um, public comment. Hearing none. Treasurer's report, Diane. Okay. Oh, I, excuse me. Yeah. Also with us is Dana Hadley, town administrator, and Diane Isabel, <laughs> town treasurer. Okay. Thank you, Brad. Not a problem. Okay. <laughs> okay. I've sent out the forms, I sent them out at the end of January for the 2020 personal taxes, uh, tax, tax forms for the um, businesses, and they're due on April 20th. Now, in the next couple of weeks, the assessors will be going out in Berlin, and they're going to make certain that I have all the businesses, that maybe there might be some that were open in 2019, okay. so they'll make certain that I have all of them. And so, like I said, those are out, and I should be receiving, I'm actually starting to receive some of those back. And otherwise, than that, the only other thing I have is on the agenda. Okay, thank you, Diane. Uh, status of update of fiscal year 20 budget. Okay. And I've given uh, Flo and Brad just some, I've given them a budget status report with some notes that I've got on it. And because uh, we are right now, we're obviously in the eighth month. So we're getting towards the end of our fiscal year. But this report goes through the end of January. Uh, and I just wanted to point out a couple things that are going on. So um, as far as on the income side of it, we have a municipal grant mitigation that was from FY19 to 4410. That is finally going to be, I think it's pretty much done. All the work has been done on it. Yes, so we're we just waiting for the this. Uh research period or what yeah. they call it. So as soon as that's done, I can submit the request. Yeah, and then the we'll moment. have the grant. And yeah. I think it's like, what, $7,800, I believe, in yes. total? Yeah, 7000 so, yeah. yeah, so that is, that's still the process. Uh, and then in the miscellaneous revenue, we have uh, the loan proceeds for the FY20 truck that we bought of 150000 And then police fines. Um, we are over budget on that, which is good because this is income. And this is the town share of tickets, the tickets that are uh, ticketed along the highway. And everything's turned into the state, and then they give us our share. So that is more than we were anticipating, So which is, is, is good. Uh, on the police contract wages, we did not budget anything, and we received $11,087. And that is mostly duties for exit six that they were hired. Um, I think it's by the state, I believe, that hired our police force. Right. Uh, while this work was being done. Were, I think they were hired by the contractor yeah. for that job. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then uh, is the revenue that we get from the police grants. Now, we received $3,850 for the equipment grant. That's probably the last of the equipment grants we'll be getting for the next few years. The state is not doing as much with those. Uh, then we have 3500 received on the operations grant, which is a click it or ticket. That one is still ongoing. And we received 2188 on the DUI grant, and that one's still ongoing. So We never budget for those because we don't know how much they're going to be. Or if they're going to continue to they're going to, Or if we're actually going to get it. Right. We also have $11,000 that we got. It's in a... Um, reserve account for the exit six yes. project. Yep. And we need to use that on road um, maintenance. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking East Road would be a good candidate okay. for that. Yeah. And it's, it's or the police. In, the, yeah. in, in how we can use it in the grant. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> so. yeah. Can so it be used for anything like um, the bridge repair? No. No. So yeah. just road maintenance. Right, right. just it's for that exit specific. six mm -hmm. project. And then I think extra duties, too, for the police And, and the police, yeah. 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 And then as far now, we're going into the expense part of it. And if you look under meetings, election, ballots, we have a credit balance of 2,082. And that is, and this is on page two. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, and that is that we've reimbursed uh, t over $2,000 for FY19. That was from um, the school. That we had incurred expenses in FY19. We finally got reimbursed for in FY20. We were not an anticipating that, so that's very good. Uh, on page three, uh, the planning consultant, we have 2058, and that's part of that grant that I just talked about on the first page that had to do with the plan mitigation. So that's expenditures for the FY20 portion of it. And I think there's one more bill that will appear in February, and then we'll have all of the bills. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. yeah. And then on the recreation board, the $600 is for swim lessons that were in July of 2019 that we authorized. Uh, and then Green Up Day is a credit of 425.54. Once again, that was FY19. We pay Casella for Green Up Day expenses, and then they reimburse me in FY20. So I think that that's good news on that. Uh, the next page on page four, if we look at under the town offices under maintenance, we have expenditures of 11,566, and we have budgeted 10,000. Well, 7166 of it is the doors replaced of the police department that were done in FY20. And then equipment contracts, it's that's you know, that's right on par right now, but that's for the copiers and dock start, just to remind everybody. Mm -hmm. And that you pay once a year, so it's in advance. Yeah, part yeah. of it, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then the next part of it, legal services, we have a credit balance of 4820. That I still have not been billed for some of the, we had some that did not go to tax sale, however, they were able to get some of the, uh, the fees back from the attorney, and the attorney has not finished billing me for all those fees. So we will have a pro positive balance in February. And then on the Board of Abatement, um, we've been, we had budgeted 5,000, we spent 12,000, and that is, you know, we don't have any control of the Board of Abatement. Mm -hmm decides what they're going to abate, mm -hmm. so just to make you aware of that. Uh, and then police services, some of those are going over, we're still on page four. Mm -hmm. uh, the full time, I think that, you know, we probably will be right at budget on that one, I think at this point in time. I think we will. We I think we will. The part time is in terrible condition. Yeah, that we're um, way over. We're over by almost $11,000 right now, and that's through the end of January. Uh, and then also the police overtime, that will go over. We were at uh, like 19,000 at the end of January, and we bought and we budgeted 20. So I do feel we will go over to that. And then on page five, um, the police training. We're going to go over on that as well. We budgeted 4,000. We're already at 5,900. But a lot of these trainings, uh, we just have more officers that are interested in getting training. What they do is they ask the chief of police if they can go to specific trainings. Uh, and then once they've justified it, then he will, you know, allow them to t attend those trainings. Is that just we're not budgeting realistically? I think that that's yeah. correct. I think they're probably under on that. And then um, I've just shown where the wages that we have for the PD grants, those are offset by the in income that we had from the income section of it. And then on the Berlin Community Fund, we have a $2,500 credit balance, and that's a donation from Walmart that our police officers go to local businesses and do get donations throughout the year. And that does help uh, to buy miscellaneous items that the police department needs to buy. Handcuffs, for example. That's nice. I didn't know that happened. <laughs> yeah, that is, that's yeah, that is nice. They do, well, they do a lot of programs for the kids in school. Right. I remember yeah, with the backpacks. Do, I just didn't yeah. realize they got donations for it. So yeah. that's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. They do. And then uh, at the end of that page, I'm just saying for Winter Roads, uh, we budgeted 70000 and right now we're at 61 5, and I do think that probably will go over. All right. It's time. And then on page six, um, under highway, asphalt marking and sealing. Um, we, there, we budgeted 150000 We spent 130000 basically. Uh, we paved patches for the town garages, which was uh, $4,022. And then Partridge Farm Road and Industrial Lane, we put in 109800 So that is the majority of what was spent on that. Then under highway other for garage maintenance utilities, we budgeted sixteen thousand. We've already spent eighteen thousand, and part of that eighteen thousand is an air compressor and dryer for forty six hundred dollars, 
and removal of the fuel tank for $3,600. Both of those weren't expected. Mm -hmm. uh, and then under traffic lights, we did repairs of $2,100, which was not expected either. Yeah. So we were at $3,000 for the budget and we're up to $3,200 for expenditures. And then under the capital budget, highway equipment and structures, um, we spent $158,000 of our $200,000 budget. $2,300 of that is Richardson Road, and $155,800 is for the new truck that we bought. And that's just all of the, the bigger ticket items. Mm -hmm. How much did we spend on Richardson Road? Well, in FY20, we spent $2,300. In FY19, I think we spent about that same amount. I think so, or a little more. What was it in FY20? FY20 is 2300 2300 Thank you. Yeah. And that, as you know, that project, I'm hoping, finish, get, will get finished this year. And I'm like the Grim Reaper on that. That's expensive. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, on the income side, um, current use is 134%. That the state gives me what you know what we have for actual current use, and that really is dependent on you know some, people some that are making different, changes. Yeah, yeah, different factors. Yeah, people I mean, that a are lot taking of people that are out of current yeah, use. So. A lot of people doing that. The pilot revenue that is higher than we had anticipated, but we're done with the pilot revenue right now. I got more from the state than we anticipated. We never know with the state. That's one what of those we're things that I'm very low on on yeah. guessing. So I'm always happy when I have more. I'd rather have guess too low than guess too high. Yeah. Thank you, Diane. Anything else? No, What's up? That's it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. We'll skip right to down street. Come on up. And sign it, please. Have a good night, Diane. Thank you. You remember Eileen was here at the last meeting, and we talked about the MOU, and the MOU has, um, we've all looked at it, and we've all agreed to it, including Rob Halpert. And so I think Eileen is hoping that you will be willing to sign the MOU. Did Rob have many changes? No. No. I would like to move that we uh, approve the memorandum of understanding with Town Street as presented. And I second the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. <laughs> Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Now, I was going to, um, I don't have enough signatures. Um, Jeremy, are you in town that you could stop in and, and sign um, this MOU? Yeah, I can, I can stop by tomorrow. Okay, all right. How, how late are you there? Uh, tomorrow I'll be here till about 5 o'clock. Okay, uh, I will try to be there before then. Okay, great. Thank you. And then when I get that, I'll send it to you. Yep, that would be uh, great. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. We're looking forward to continuing to work on this. Things are going well. Congratulations on your municipal grant announcement. Yeah. It was a really nice ceremony with the governor yeah. and the opportunity. Yeah. Really, it was a good sign that they wanted to highlight what Berlin's up to. Mm -hmm. um, so excited about that. And uh, you know, we're working with our consultant through Let's Grow Kids and we're, um, we've got, we did share a really, you know, pretty early conceptual drawing, but we're, we're pretty, really excited. It's a very challenging site mm -hmm. because of the elevation issues. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been, I mean, we had a meeting with six different designs from our architect, very different designs, trying to address it. And the, the one that we shared is the one that we're going to try to focus in on and, and see if it works. It's actually um, kind of almost like a split level. The daycare has got a little bit of a higher ceiling. and um, But what we like about it is that 
everything's pretty compressed and small and it really preserves a lot of the green space. Um, nice. So, yeah, so it's coming along and uh, yeah, so, and I know, you know, you're about to hopefully approve your consultant for the new town. Well, center. Carla's <laughs> here to talk about that, yeah. so yeah. I don't know yeah. how that's going to go, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and everything else I feel like is, is on track at this point. So I think so, Eileen, we're but we'll stay in touch. Okay. Wonderful news. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, right. you. Thank you very yeah. much. Thank you. Very much appreciate it. Keep you posted. Have a great night. Thank you. Carla is here to talk about um, the consultant for the new town center designation project. Um, and I'll let her explain how the planning commission came to a decision. And we had two consultants that responded to our request for an RFP. Uh, one was Play Sense, and the other was. Um, the boys and king. So, I mean, basically, we had we weren't sure what we would get for a response, so we had yeah. had this big you know, process where we were going to, you know, narrow it down and then decide, yeah. but we didn't have to. We had two applications, but but to be honest with you, they were both very good applications, and it was a difficult decision. Um, you know, Tom did draft, you know, criteria that we evaluated it, but ultimately, um, the decision came down to. Um, the the we chose PlaySense because the 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 consultants had specific experience with the town center designation. Makes so it really, it, it really in my mind it, that was sort of the deciding factor because mm -hmm. each of them brought a, a little different flavor, um, and I just thought that that one was much more directed in the very specific things we needed, and they had the experience with. Um, with both the, the Colchester Town Center, which is not as successful, and the South Burlington Town Center, which is successful. So I think they've seen the, um, you know, the what not to do as well as the what to do, okay. and um, and I think that I, I think they're gonna it's gonna be a really good team. Place Sense was the <laughs> consultant that did the work for the. Um, the update and the zoning. Plan. Yes, excellent. But she partnered with an engineer with an engineering firm that has experience with Vermont. The other thing is, is they they all had experience with you know various towns in in Vermont, and I think I think they'll just bring a really good mix of of um, ideas and experience to the table. So it was but positive. it was really but it was really difficult. It had to have been were, very they difficult. They were both really. They were good. both really mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, They're so reputable, <clears throat> both of them. Yes, and and honestly, it was nice to see another because we hadn't had that problem in the past we only had one you know one proposal um, and it was sort of nice to see the different approach but I thought some of the aspects of the Du Bois and King one while they were good they weren't as focused in on what we needed mm -hmm. whereas the other one I thought was more focused in on the very specific things we needed it addressed zoning a little bit better because one of the things that we'll have to do is uh, tweak the zoning potentially but uh, there was a proposal in the play sense that we might be able to avoid a huge zoning change by doing a design review, which would be great, as opposed to great. having to develop a completely new form-based code for the town center. So yes. that would save a lot of time and money. So mm -hmm. it just seemed to be the, the best thing for us at this point in time. So we are hoping that you will um, uh, approve that, that, uh, that proposal and we can move forward. So on this one, I'm looking for a motion to approve the contract with Place Sense and to authorize the chair to sign for the town. What happened with the Colchester's town center that it wasn't uh, was well, it the location? Or? It, there was a lot of factors. I think one being that it was it was one developer. They explained it as, in some sense, that it was one developer, and so the the town itself maybe didn't have as much of an uh, a, a much of a buy-in because it was it seemed to be benefiting this one person or this one. So and it was just it was a big green space, so there was not any development there. Right. So so starting you now going from zero. I think right. that that impacted it. Whereas South Burlington already had, you know, obviously a lot of, of activity there, a lot of businesses there, um, and it was more creating that infill and creating that walkability. So um, we have, we're even though I, I I hesitate to say we're similar to South Burlington, we we have much more similarity with the South Burlington Town Center than we do with the Colchester Town Center, in the Just sense the that commercial part of it from the sense of where we're starting from, mm -hmm. and so I think we have. 
um, you know, we, uh, it's very positive in that regard. We have, we have a lot of the benefits that they had, and I think um, that will help us to move forward. I think South Burlington has been a lot more, I'm not criticizing Colchester, but a lot more invested mm -hmm. yeah. into mm -hmm. the project, mm -hmm. yes. you know. Yeah. And, yeah, and one of the um, engineers is actually on the South Burlington Planning Commission, so I think that helps to have that direct experience with both sides of it. So I think, I think it's going to be, it's really exciting. I think, it's going to, I think they're going to do a great job. Excellent. Well, I make a motion to accept the contract for consulting services with Place Sense and the Town of Berlin um, to approve the contract for the consultant services from March 1, 2020, which will end on 12-31-2021, and for the chair to sign on behalf of the town. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Thank Jeremy, you. was that you that seconded? I did, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have Jeremy and Justin on the phone? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Well, I appreciate effort. your support. And it, it's really, we're, things are moving. And with Down Street, which is a really exciting project. Um, it's really nice to see the. It is exciting. It's all yeah. coming yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. So thank you very much. Yep. Okay. And Carla did a months. really nice job <laughs> at the ceremony. She gave a little talk. I thought it was very good. Oh, thank you. It was, um, it was and it, it that was a really nice event. Yeah, it was too bad they put it. They held it on the same day as the New Hampshire primary. Wouldn't you know? They, <laughs> yes. knocked, they knocked it straight out of the news. <laughs> oh well. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Um, Discussion regarding sewer extension on pain turnpike data. I just wanted to give you a little update of the extension project for pain turnpike north. As you recall, at your last meeting, you approved um, the contract with Du Bois Construction, uh, which we have not signed a contract yet because it was contingent on USDA, and we don't have that yet. So we are waiting mm -hmm. for that. Mm -hmm. But as we did meet with the contractor today to talk about how they were going to approach this project. Uh, one of the first things they are going to do is to bore under Route 62 to put in a new water line. And the current location of our water line is now going to be the location for the sewer um, line because of elevation and the, the gravity feed. Um, that will be the first thing. Uh, then they are going to be installing the lift station at the uh, Central Vermont Chamber of Commerce. We have an easement the Chamber of Commerce has given us, and so a lift station will be on their property. Um, and then when they begin excavation, they will move in a southerly direction toward Route 62. Um, they plan to begin in mid-April and hope to complete the project by mid-September. And there is going to be road closures for a lot of this time because the, the line is going in the road, basically in the road. And in some places, the line is going to need to be over 14 feet deep because of the, because of the uh, gravity. Um, so we will um, make sure that the word gets out about Paint Turnpike North being closed. I was just going to say, how uh, far in advance do we need to notice? Um, I think we'll have enough notice in advance, and I would take we're going to be sending letters to all, everyone down there soon and put it on Front Porch Forum, put it in the paper, mm -hmm. do what we can to get the word out. Tell it to Corinne, have her put it in her newsletter. Absolutely, in um, her news to know. Yeah, and residents down there will have access to their property during this project, and at night the road will be open. How long a work day are they talking about? They're working 10-hour uh, days. Five ten hour days. So I'm trying to think. I think it's probably seven to five, something like that. So they'll be working when people are going to work. I'm sure they will. Yeah, yeah. And we'll have to notify emergency services because 
everyone will have to go around. Right. So that's where um, that is. We are waiting for the approval from USDA, and we don't anticipate a problem. We just don't have it yet. And you said mid-April to mid-September? Mid-April mid to mid-September. Okay. Thanks, David. That is the name on that one? That's it, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, approval of the select board minutes for February 5th, 2020. I make the motion that we approve the select board minutes of February 5th, 2020, unless there's any comments. That's Justin? Yes. Thank you. Yep. Do I hear a second? Yeah, Justin. Justin. Second. Justin. Okay. Um, any further discussion? If not, those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm Aye. Mm -hmm. Okay. Motion passes. Um, approve licenses, permits, vouchers, and applications. I make a motion that we approve the general fund accounts payable warrant number 20 G15 with checks 19973 to 2000 uh, 20012 in the amount of $96,321.31 also pay, payroll warrant number 20-17 for payroll from February 2nd 2020 to February 15th 2020 in the amount of $48,118.43 January gen general journal entries and tax admin entries. Also the January reconciled bank statements for the general fund, sewer commission, and water division. Second. Any further discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Um, Can I tell Scott, you about Scott Hill Road? Scott yeah. Hill Road yeah. um, Tim came to me this afternoon, and Scott Hill Road from um, East Road going toward us, um, the Collier residence, I don't know if you know where that yep. is, mm -hmm, but um, is extremely in bad shape due to the ice buildup. You know, the, they've plowed, they've put um, salt down. It hasn't really taken care of the ice problem, and the road is literally um, humps of ice. It's very rough. Um, so I wanted to talk to the board. He, he suggested that we close the road through traffic. Um, I don't like closing roads. Um, can you take, can, does the grader have grousers on it? Um, I asked him about, he has taken the grader up there, but he can't quite get it scraped up without damaging the pavement, is what he tells me. I think there's also some frosties. And there's frosties as well, yeah. yeah. It is very rough. Um, it's terrible. Yeah. I agree. Well, of course, you know, I mean, you put the signs out where the people want to listen to them. Or, uh, you they them do have out. signs up there, I believe, that say bumps. <laughs> and we're not kidding. Um, <laughs> but I have no problem with closing the road, but I mean, you've got to still leave it open for the residents. Absolutely. Well, I think, I think we were thinking of closing to through traffic until yeah. it gets in better shape because it is, it is pretty horrible. It sounds wise to close yeah, it. I, mean, I think people would be understanding of the reason behind it. You know, at least the, if you yeah. at least if you put the signage up and they damage their cars, it's not like we're going to be. Well, that's the thing Tim was saying to me. Um, you know, he's he was up there working, and people are, and and I get it. They're driving Why? along like they would, and mm -hmm. and you know, but definitely and, happens, yeah. especially if people who are not familiar with the road. So we'll go ahead and we'll. Advertise that's going to be closed through traffic, and I'll have Tim get some signs, yep. and, and we'll do that and, and keep an eye on it. You want a motion on that, or um, I don't think I need one. Just a consensus. Yeah, just do a consensus. 
just you're aware of it. Jer so. Jeremy, Jeremy and Justin, are you good with that? Okay. So this will be a consensus. Mm -hmm. yeah. huh. uh, and let's see here. Town Administrator's report. Yes, I have a few things. Um, one thing is the email that Brad got from the Regional Planning Commission uh, advising they're wanting to know the select board's opinion on the V-Trans project, which is replacing a bridge over the Stevens branch on Route 302. Um, V-Trans came in and spoke with the select board, and I want to say it was maybe early in 18, 2018, um, that they gave their pro um, overall presentation on the project. It's the bridge right next to um, computer barn and computer barn rubber and bubbles, rubber, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. bubbles and, and so Where forth. Where Mary's used to be. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't think you'd have an objection or, or do you have any comments? I mean, well, I was just going to call her and tell her. I mean, from the, from the photographs that they showed us, the abutments were shifting, so it yeah. needs to be redone. It, I mean, yeah. Yeah. So. So I'll go ahead and I'll advise Grace. Any comments from the other two? Yeah. I don't have any comments on it. Yeah. Okay. No, it's okay. Okay. The next thing I have is um, Velco is, as you know, is replacing their some equipment down at their. Um, location down on Nelson Drive, down near where Green Mountain Power is off of Dog River Road. <clears throat> they want to begin in the spring, and they're asking for permission to use Dog River Road, and it's probably going to be at the time that we post the roads because of spring. Mm -hmm. um, Tim is not in favor of that. Um, they did say, oh, we can fix the road, but Tim is not in favor. But I'm wondering if they could go out the other way and go out by the Montpelier Public Works um, and, well, and maintain either, it. Either way, there. I mean, what are they moving in there? Heavy equipment to... to transformers? They're moving new transformers, but I'm not... I guess that's probably one thing they're moving in, but they're going to have equipment in which to pick up these things and put them in place. I've just they told you everything they, I know. Yeah. They can't move it in now <laughs> and leave it? Um, At least the roads are frozen. They're not going to hurt them any. I could ask them that question. It's I worth have asking. Not. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the roads right now, well, they'll take 100000 no problem. Okay. I will, I will ask if they cannot move them in now. I mean, if they, can move in the, if they can move in the equipment transformers, they can always just leave them there and then move the equipment out if they have another project for it. You know, I could ask Mr. Best to come in and talk to you as well. He, would, he had been here before. Well, he's got very little time, but March is coming. I know, but... <laughs> right. It's worth asking. It might be very well that they can follow the way that you just described. How would you like me to address it if he tells me, no, that's not possible? Well, I don't know. Play hardball, you just tell me. Be that road's terrible. What's our alternative to allowing them to do the project? Can they wait until the, the mud season's over? Well, either wait till mud season's over. Well, they almost have to. Well, they will if we if they can't get in in there. Right. You know. Right. I guess. You know. So, I mean, if they move the stuff in now with the roads frozen, then they can drive in there and do any, whatever work they need because they're not going to take and be hurting anything. Would you be amenable if I told him that if he could move his whatever it is now to go ahead, but when the roads posted, he can't? Yep. Absolutely. How about that? Yeah. Okay. Because it's hardly, it's hardly fair to take and give special dispensation to them and then tell a logger he can't take it. It's difficult. Exactly. Yeah, it's difficult. And Tim does try to help people, you know, early morning type things. Mm -hmm. Well, some of those transformers can be pretty weighty. Yeah. 
Uh, the next issue that I've had, we've had some um, residents plowing snow into the road, and Tim has made up um, notices that he's going to just drop off and, and try and advise people not to do that. Mm -hmm. um, he did have one that he had the police go down. It was unfortunate because we should have really called the person before we sent the police. Do you want me to read um, that out loud? So but would you like to read it out loud? That yeah. way people that are watching can know what the notice sure. says. So Dana is explaining that there's a notice that Tim is leaving for folks. It says notice to Berlin landowners. And it says, please remember that it is illegal to plow snow across a town road. The snow that is left in the road will freeze, causing a dangerous situation for other drivers and for the town snow plows. Under 19 BSA section 1105, you could be fined $1,000 plus damages and legal fees. Thank you, Town of Berlin. And then attached to it is the Vermont Statutes Online, Title 19 Highways, Chapter 11, Protection of Highways, Section 1105, Obstructing Travel. Thank you, Dana. Mm -hmm. So that's just so you'll know what that's about. And finally, um, and Justin had asked me about road standards. You know we're working on this class um, status change from a class four to a class three road and working on a policy. And what is the standard? And there is a standard. Um, and it is in our site plan reviews. And also, um, back in 2013, the town accepted town road and bridge standards, which are set by the state. And those were not for existing roads at the time, but for all new roads mm -hmm. to uh, come up to that standard. So it does explain what the standards are in there. And here, um, I've got to bring the road up to an acceptable town standard. So I guess I'll change the wording on that a little bit to, to agree with the state standards mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and refer to that. Um, and maybe if I do that, I'll bring this back to you at your next meeting. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think that's wise to do a comparison to the state and then make amends you know, where needed. And then I also have the, um, this is in our site plan review. And, and this is a state form that explains that. Um, next, um, we have, we, I met with the consultant who has done our stormwater planning for the town office and it was for the fire department. Joe Staub came, and um, we all met with the consultant plus um, the Regional Planning Commission on the plan for the fire department. And Joe was amenable to how they drawn up the plans. And there is another plan for the school, which is March 4th. Pam is gonna meet with the school. And lastly, Chimney Suite, I call it chimney sweep, but it's a it's a building with other businesses in it, down on Route 302, um, which is quite an interesting plan because that's going to be underground. It's going to be somewhat chambers. There's a lot of water to treat down there, and a lot of it comes from across the street, and it may actually be a partnership with property owners across the street and so forth. So that is a project underway. We're waiting for a grant, as far as the town office goes, to pay for the um, construction of the retention ponds and, and uh, the buffer strip. When will you know on that grant? I um, think, I, I'm not sure of an exact date, but probably this spring. Good. Anything else, Dana? That's, that's all I have. Thank you, Dana. Uh, Entertain a motion to convene the liquor board. I make a motion that we convene the liquor board. You have to take him, you have to take him to, uh, get out of the select board first. I make a motion that we move out of the select board and convene the liquor board. Here a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Motion carries. And what do we got, Dana? Okay, so we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is the time of year we have these. These are due by April 1st every year. These are, we have two um, applicants are applying for a class one license. Those are two restaurants, Applebee's and Wayside Restaurant. And the others, and they're also applying for a class two license. And the others are all class two. And here is a list of who they are. So class one is what? Uh, distilled? Uh, yeah, like distilled. a mixed drink or something like that. And a, then class two is beer and wine. Like, yeah, and that's right. Spirits, I guess they call it. Well, spirits would be the class one. Right. Um, and so Applebee's is looking for class one and also class two. Wayside Restaurant is looking for class one and class two. And then the others that are wanting to renew their class two is the Berlin Jolly on Route 302, CVS Pharmacy on 302, Kinney Drugs on 302, Maplewood on Pain Turnpike North, Price Chopper 168 Ames Drive, and Shaw's Pain Turnpike North. What about the other restaurants? What do um, they do? I don't know. I imagine when we this is I have not you, remembered the class. You, you've got uh, China Moon. China Moon uh, um, Pizza Hut. Yeah. Um, I don't remember them having a class one. To tell you the truth. Um, and what's they have until April first? Uh, does the bowling alley serve? I don't know for sure. I thought that was just beer and wine. I don't think it's drinks. They but. have a they have liquor as well. They do what's have liquor as well. That, that license comes through the state because of their That's affiliation retail. with with. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because they're selling unopened containers. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, that's they do need this one for their class two for their store sales of wine and beer. Yeah. Okay. Try, try to think. Are there any other restaurants that are? Not listed. Um, we, got, well, we don't have that many out. restaurants serving alcohol. Steak all, steak steak out steak out yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't think of any others. That's on the Berry Montpelier Road. Yeah. Applebee's is up here. Right. Uh, ones that are selling um, beer and wine. I mean, you've got uh, all the grocery stores. They're, and and you'll get all those, I'm sure. You've got Price Shopper and Shaw's here. You've got two of them. Yeah. You'll be having Walmart. I mean, yeah. they just don't want to have it like we usually do after the special meeting to sign a liquor license. We're trying to avoid that. Oh well, um, one do them individually. Just um, off the list. I, I would think maybe if you just did one motion and list them all, and. And I'll tell Bethany that I've got the list and she doesn't have to. And do we have to differentiate on the list right now which one are class one and class I two? Would. I would on and it's Applebee's. So this list is class one, this list is class two? No, no. Uh, I'll Just combine Apple. them. Just Applebee's is class one and two. Okay. And the last one, Wayside, is class one and two. Okay. And all the others are? Uh, class two. Two. Okay. Very good. We can do this. I make a motion to approve the liquor license renewals for class one and two would be Applebee's, Wayside Restaurant. And in conjunction, I make the approval that we go forward with the liquor license renewals for class two for Berlin Jolly, CVS Pharmacy, Kinney Drugs, Maplewood, Price Chopper, Shaw's. There a second? Second. 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 <laughs> Okay, so I need, there are at least two for every applicant, only Applebee's Let's and Maplewood would have four. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of the game. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Now you can start in your spiel. My spiel. <laughs> would you sign those, please? And then when Jeremy comes tomorrow, he can sign. Yeah. And I can give them back to Rosemary. Um... Let's see here. So that's, you're all done liquor. Uh, that's, that's it. Uh, I make a motion that we come out of the liquor um, 
portion of the meeting and reconvene the select board meeting. Here a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, a motion carries. Uh, let's see here. Uh, round table flow. I have nothing this evening. Jeremy? I'm good. Justin? No, sir. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Do we have an executive okay, session sir. at all tonight? No. We make the motion to adjourn. You have a second? Did we have a second? Yep, second. Okay. okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Aye.